Hey everyone, Mark and Julie here from RV Love. We're at the California RV Show and we're having a great time so far. This is a really cool venue. It's actually really fun with having the race cars here in the background <laughs> here at the Fontana Auto Club Speedway. In this video, check out Class A motorhomes, small travel trailers, off-road vans, overlanding rigs, and off-road trailers, Class B vans, and some vintage restorations. We had a great first day here, seeing what there is here at the California RV Show. It's a big show, over a million square feet, mm -hmm. over a thousand RVs. And what we've done a lot of tours in, of RVs in the past, so what we're gonna do in this video is talk about some of the highlights and some of the things that we find are unique or interesting that we've seen at the show today. Yeah, this is different to other shows that we've been to in the past and we're definitely being here on the west coast in california noticing a few differences to what we've seen to other shows on the east coast so we'll be sharing some of that as well in this video stay tuned for an overview of what's hot at the california rv show So you may hear some background noise in our videos from the California RV show, obviously people walking around talking, golf carts, but you may also hear some race cars in the background. We are here at a Speedway. This is actually a NASCAR racetrack, which is really unique about this venue. It is the first time the California RV show has been held here at the Auto Club Speedway, and it is a really fun venue. There are go-kart racing tracks. There is a real racing track out there. There are cars racing out there this morning. And hopefully we'll get some time to check those out as well amongst checking out all of these RVs. So we're here at the Newmar booth here at the California RV Show. Newmar is a manufacturer of Class A motorhomes. Uh, very nice motorhomes, good quality that are very popular among full-time RVers. And they have many units in the gas and diesel range. A couple new things here at the Newmar booth. One of them is the reintroduction of the Country Star name. That was a brand that was really popular with Newmar many years ago and it went away and now they've reintroduced it. Mm. It's not a completely new RV. What they've actually done mm. is replace the Ventana LE with a Country Star. And the Ventana LE was the entry level diesel motorhome for Newmar. There actually could be a little bit confusing. There are two Ventanas. There's a Ventana LE and a Ventana and LE is the entry level. That's the one that's now known as the Country Coach. Sorry, <laughs> no it's not. And that's the one that is now known Known as the Country Star. So this is inside the 2020 Newmar Country Star Model 3412. It has the 360 horsepower engine and it has modern features like a digital dash but as you can see here most of the styling is more of a traditional styling. This interior on this unit is called the Glacier Glazed Maple and you can see when you look close there is a bit of an aged look to the cabinetry trying to keep with that traditional feel. But the colors in this coach are very, very calm and soothing. They really flow together well with each other. And the finishes in this Country Star do feel a slight upgrade from the former Ventana LE that we're more familiar with. Nice little detail here in the roof air conditioning unit is a silhouette of the Numar logo. The floor plan, when you walk in, there's of course the two captain's chairs at the front and there's a dinette on the left hand side and just beyond that there would be the kitchen on the left hand side on the right hand side as you walk in there's a recliner chair and a couch further back there's a single full bathroom in this unit and then the bedroom has a queen size bed and a full size closet along the back manufacturer suggested retail price on this Newmar Country Star is around two hundred and eighty thousand dollars well, we're here outside of the Earth Cruiser, which is a very cool looking expedition vehicle. Really caught our eye because you'll see there's a map here with Australia very prominently. And of course, we've just landed from Australia just three days ago. And it was really interesting seeing all of the different vehicles down under and very much more catering to off-road and expedition type, well, I guess getting out in the outback, which I've never done. Definitely noticed that in Australia is the mm -hmm. RVs in general, caravans and motorized were definitely more built for off-road. This is a fantastic example. Earth Cruisers actually, the reason why Australia is on this globe on here is they're actually an Australian company originally. It started off in 2008, moved to the United States in Bend, Oregon in 2013, and they've been producing here. This particular Earth Cruiser is their global version, I believe, with this pop top. When that comes down, it's small enough to fit inside a shipping container so they can ship it all around the world. It's based on a Mitsubishi Fuso chassis which is also a widely used chassis all around the world. 
interesting also owned by Mercedes, so parts and services were available globally as well. But it's really cool, very off-road capable, has a sharp approach and departure angle, so it's getting really off-road. And it's got the interior living space that's really meant to be out away from amenities for long periods of time, so you don't have to go back and reprovision. It's got a 65 gallon water tank, but it's not, which isn't huge, but it's pretty good size. And interestingly, they have a system set up on here to be able to bring on water from streams that filters and purifies the water so you can get ongoing water as you're out traveling around. Also has solar power and lithium batteries to be fully off grid for a really long adventure. So this is really cool. We're excited to check this out because having spent some time down in Australia and starting to ask you know, family and friends about what it's like down there to RV, because I've never RV'd in Australia, neither of us have. And we're definitely, that's on our radar, something we want to do more of. And so we're exploring possibilities at the moment. But one thing we really did learn is you do need something that is much more off-road capable and the chassis being designed for something for those more rugged conditions than what we typically find here in the US. So I'm really excited to go inside and check this out and uh, take you in to have a look too. Let's go. First thing I noticed when I stepped yeah, in here is the bathroom uh, is right in. as you step in, which I think is brilliant because it allows you to shower off all your dirt and grime before you actually get in it. Actually surprisingly spacious kitchen. And this here, the drawers and everything are made out of starboard, which is super durable marine type equipment. So it's a queen size bed in the back here. Large dinette table at the front. Looks like you can move it around this panel. It's really cool. Everything centrally located here. All right, so now we're here at the Happier Camper booth. This is a really cool concept. They're totally modular design. The first one they came out with is called the HC1. It's an ultralight travel trailer slash utility trailer. They've been in business since 2010. Really cool story how they started off restoring old trailers, then renting trailers, and then started building these cute little fiberglass double hold trailers. It's the only double hold fiberglass trailers on the market. And the HC1 is a very empty utilitarian space, but it has a modular design so they can move cubes and move refrigerators. Everything can move around within it. You can take them out of the travel trailer and set them outside, including the kitchen elements. What's really cool is he was explaining to us that he's just used the math on the two main numbers of furniture building, and that's the 16 inches and 20 inches, and that by combining those, you get all the different heights for countertops, for tabletops, and for seating, and for also for laying down. You can move these cubes any position inside the trailer to accommodate for a sleeping area or for kitchen area or for a workspace. It's extremely flexible, beautiful modular design. They're very attractive too. I really like their vintage look of it. They have three models. The main model they've had, it's called the HC1, has been the one that they've been selling for years. Very popular. They actually have a one year waiting list on these trailers. But this year at the show, they're introducing two new prototypes. They have an HCT trailer. It's more of a proper recreational vehicle type trailer with a inbuilt shower and a bath facility. It has freshwater tank and gray water tank. They're currently using a dry toilet, but they are talking about doing a plumbed in version to have a regular flushable toilet. The rest of the components can be modular and moved around to change the furniture layout. And the other prototype, this is the brand new prototype yet. They're not in production at all yet, but inside this van is a kit which we think is fascinating as well. It's for around $10,000 you can buy a kit that you would install in any Sprinter van on this same chassis length. And you can just turn your regular van into an RV by buying this kit and having it shipped to you. Price point on that is expected to be around $10,000 for the base kit and a few additional mods to that. The price point on the HCT is around $35,000 and the price point on the HC1, which is the original version, is around $25,000. Really cool, very innovative company, very impressed with what they've got going on. Something we saw much more at this show than at other shows was displays by companies that restore or rebuild vintage travel trailers and motorhomes. This company called Wanderlust had many vintage travel trailers on display. Then there was this beautifully restored 1956 Greyhound bus conversion 
amazing coach inside and out, completed by Leisure Coachworks. It appears that here in Southern California, there is definitely a market for creating something truly unique. This was especially interesting to us after recently completing the renovation on our own 20-year-old motorhome. So this is inside the 2020 Tiffin Allegro Bus 45 OPP. This is a very high-end coach in the Tiffin line. MSRP on this is $580,000. Show special is around $517,000. As you can see behind me, it is a newer, very fresh and modern interior compared to most Tiffin designs. The cabinets are a gray color which, with a high gloss coat, which makes them look very bright and shiny and very spacious looking interior. This light ivory type in leather is also really nice and fresh. Being a 45 foot quad slide coach, it's obviously very roomy. Working your way back, then you would have a large kitchen space and over here, the dinette with two freestanding chairs. It's a bath and a half unit, king size bed towards the back, and then a full bath in the very back of the coach. Really like this tile treatment behind the backsplash in the bathroom and in the kitchen. All these features that you would expect, like digital dash, it has actually humongous monitors on the dash that would be used for GPS and entertainment as well. The kitchen area would have part of the counter would slide out but a lot of high-end features, a lot of high-end touch points. It's interesting to see that some of the features that we have in our country coach after our remodel, some of those same elements appearing in here. Lighter cabinets, black handles, lighter colored furniture, a wood pattern tile on the floor. I really like the marble finish on this countertop. I also really like the refrigerator in this unit. The front of the refrigerator has panels that match the rest of the cabinets, which is a nice look. One kind of funny thing to point out about this coach, you know we love to be able to do the bathroom test, checking the ability to do our business in there. The front bathroom seems to be designed for people who are right-handed, and the one in the back bathroom might be better for people who are left-handed, because the toilet roll holder is right in front of you, almost like an armrest, especially once you put a roll of toilet paper on there. So, It'd be nice to have a little bit more room when they did that design, but that's a pretty small knock on a very beautiful coach. This coach has the 605 horsepower engine in it. I believe that has around 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. You'll see that in some of the other high-end coaches, but any, any coach with that engine is definitely going to be one of the highest performance coaches on the market. Here on the outside of this Tiffin 45 OPP, it's clear that Tiffin's doing a couple ends of the spectrum with their paint. They've got this really nice, subtle, monochromatic paint with some geometric, which is very contemporary modern and more subdued. And then they also, over here, have some really bold colors as well. And Tiffin also has a brand new version of the Breeze. They took it out of production for a few months and then did a big overhaul on it. They've got a new power plant in it and they've got a fresh new look on the front cap and they've also got a new, more contemporary styled paint as well. Most all the Tiffins at the show had fresh new looks on their front caps and we were honored to meet up with Bob and Judy Tiffin and present them with a signed copy of our book, Living the RV Life, which has our Tiffin motorhome on the front cover. Probably my favorite travel trailers here at the show are these ones offered by Black Series. There's, they have a wide range of travel trailers. They have hard-sided travel trailers, some hard-sided with pop-top and full fold-out type travel trailers designed to really get out off-road. A lot of people with overlanding rigs or Jeeps might really like to be able to tow these quite off-road. They have 50-gallon water tanks, 26-gallon waste tanks, but they're very luxurious inside. They look super rough and rugged on the outside, but they're actually quite luxurious on the inside. Love the interior on them. One of them, the larger HQ-19, even has a washer in it. Uh, I guess you gotta bring in extra water to be able to do that, but I really love their wide range of off-road focused travel trailers here. One of the features that I think is most unique on these travel trailers are the suspension. I've never seen suspension like this on a American travel trailer. I have seen some stuff similar to that in Australia. Australians built these travel trailers for a lot more rugged off-road use than we usually see travel trailers here in the United States, which interestingly, this company is from Australia originally. It's in a 13-year-old company. First 10 years were in Australia, and then the last three years, they started to open up in some American markets. 
which I guess is part of the reason why they call them caravans, which is a common term in Australia. But I was very impressed with these. Nice quality fit and finish inside. Even the, the latches feel very high quality. Nice look to the cabinets. I like this diamond plate look to the exterior and the exterior red bars that are like brush guards in case it slides into something on these heavier off-road. The, even the hitches are designed, you can tell, for much more off-road use, would be able to pivot much more than a traditional travel trailer hitch. I was definitely impressed with what I saw over here with Black Series. Another really cool product we found here at the show was this new release from Mod Vans. They're about a year and a half old, but they've already built a waiting list for their product for over a year. They have a 12-month waiting list because they're very popular. And as I can see why, it's a really unique and innovative approach to an RV. They have a really cool modular approach to the vans. They have pop tops, as you can see here, which add enormous space when you're inside and they have a screened in and also a privacy section of that canvas as well. And there's a bed above the cab. They do have an option to have a bed at the interior level as well. But the modular element of this is that most of the components inside can be taken out in less than 20 minutes and you can convert your van back to a regular passenger van or a cargo van if you're not using it as an RV regularly. And you can again convert it quickly into a van to go out for quick weekend trips. Now it has it has does have water tanks depending on the floor plan you use it'll have either a 25 gallon or a 10 gallon water tank so you do have a little bit of water capacity for a sink to wash your hands and stuff like that but this is not meant to be an rv that you would spend significant time out traveling around because it's more of a basic setup but the beauty of it is in the functionality of this modular design again you can use this van as your regular commuting vehicle to town you can set up even three rows of seating in it and you can change the positioning of the seats because of where the bolting patterns are in the floor you can change the patterns with having a fridge mounted or a sink it has a lot of different flexibility which i think is a very innovative approach to an rv in the coming year they're going to be releasing this one over off my shoulder here that's the four-wheel drive version they're currently based on the ford transit van but something worth checking out if you want something a lot more off-road capable than a regular 4x4 van, check out a sportsmobile van. This particular one's extra cool with the bed liner finish on the outside. But this is a, has comes with winches, big bumpers, a lot more clearance, locking hubs. This is a much more serious off-roading van than a lot of the other 4x4 vans out there. And sportsmobile has been around for quite a few years pretty well respected brand in the off-road van category. But they have expanded more recently into more street focused vans as well. And of course, as former mini owners, we couldn't resist checking out these rooftop campers from James Broward, not only for minis, but for pretty much any small car, just a rooftop tent and they have a couple different styles, something different if you just want to be able to have a camping option with your existing car. Of course, a major highlight for us at the show is meeting up with people who watch our videos, read our blog, and read our book. We'd love to be able to autograph our books at meetups and other book signings, and we even did a seminar here at the show. We also have another seminar coming up on this coming Saturday, October 12th, so hope to see you there. There's so much more to see here at the California RV Show. We already have another video in the works for you. So check back soon for more from the California RV Show. And until next time, we'll see you on the road.